Folks, a good friend of mine has asked how to isolate backgrounds, delete backgrounds from images or objects so that you can overlay an image in Photoshop. And so I'm going to do three different videos, I think, that show the different ways you can do this. I'm going to start with the simplest way. There, as, as with anything in Photoshop, there are different ways to do things in different times when different techniques are more appropriate. So I'm going to start with the image he wants isolated, which is an image of a drone of a Phantom DJI 4, DJI Phantom 4. And so there it is, and this one's going to be really easy. So this is going to be a quick little video that just shows how I would do this. When I look at this, I see a very clean white background. There's no variation in this background at all. And even though there are specks of white inside this, there's there's looks like it's mostly gray along the edges. We can do this, I think, pretty easily using the, the magic wand tool. But I'm going to show you kind of how I would do it. Uh, first of all, rather than just grabbing the magic wand tour, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this background, and I'll tell you why in a second. If you pull down to that little thing right there that has a little picture with the, uh, the little page with the corner pulled up, that will do a copy. There are different ways you can copy too, but that's the way I typically copy. So I've got a copy of this background now. Now this this background here, if uh, what he wants to be able to do, he wants to see the checkerboard behind it to know that he has it isolated. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a new uh, layer and you can do the new layer by clicking on this uh, right here and that creates the new layer right so I've copied a layer and now I've created a new layer now I'm going to pull this checkerboard when this is the one that's clear has no background I'm going to pull it behind this one and the reason I did a copy of the background is because if you try to pull this behind the background it won't let you do it see that you could I guess unlock that I guess and it would still then it would let you actually do it so that might be a simpler way to do it Forgive me for going back maybe the hard way, but I typically do it that way anyway. I could have unlocked the background. So there you go. See, I've got the checkerboard. If I turn the eyeball off here, you'll see here is the clear. This That means there's absolutely no pixels in this. And then here it is with the white. And he wants the white gone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the magic wand tool here. And uh, I have I have set kind of funky, funky for something else I've done. I'm going to go to point sample. It will usually default to this and usually this will be defaulted to a tolerance of 32. This tolerance tells it how close the pixel has to be to the color you select. Like if I select this white, if I have a tolerance of 32, then it will go like 32 degrees beyond white into the grays actually to select. So when you select this tool normally, it's going to come up with a tolerance of 32. And that's not going to work for this image because if I click on this, I'll see, oh, I'm on the wrong. If it does that, I'm going to just do a con Command D, Command D, or Control D, and deselect. I need to be on the right layer when I do this selection, so I click on the one that has the white on it that has the that I'm trying to get rid of. Now, if I use this tolerance of 32, which is what this usually defaults to, you'll see what happens. It's actually going to select some of this on the inside, but we want to make sure all those pixels are kept. So I'm going to do the Command D. I'm using a Mac, Command D or Control D to deselect again, and I'm going to take this tolerance back to 10. I think 10 will work just fine. I, the reason I'm picking a tolerance that high, even that high, is because I think there's probably going to be some fringe around this. If I don't pick a tolerance of 10, I could go down to a tolerance of like 1 or 2, and it's still going to pick mostly this white. It's going to pick the white, but there still might be some little white fringes around it. I think 10 is going to work good. So I'm going to click anywhere in the white. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to select all the white, right, and get rid of it. So I'm going to do that. So immediately, if I were to click Delete on my keyboard, You'd see, wow, I've got this thing pretty much done. And I think that's going to be pretty clean. I'm going to do a Command D again to deselect, but I still have these white areas, don't I? Now, what I could have done, I could have not deleted. I could have just clicked in here and then hold the, uh, I guess, the Shift key down. Shift key. And that's, see, how, see how it puts the little plus when I do the Shift key? The little plus is right underneath the Magic Wand tool. And I do that, and it's going to select that too. And I select, and I can get rid of all three of these at once. I hit Delete. And I think that's going to be pretty clean for this one. Now, what I'll do sometimes just to test this, I'm going to leave this layer here. I'm going to get another new layer. I'm going to pull it underneath. See, I grab it and just pull it down underneath this layer as well. And I'm going to fill this layer with the colors. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I've got to deselect this that I've got selected now that I've deleted that. So I'm going to do Command D again. Don't forget to do that. Deselect it. So I'm going to, I'm going to fill this layer with a color. And so we're going to say uh, Edit and fill. We could see you could do a shift F5, I guess, or whatever, up F5. I'm going to do fill. And I'm going to uh, make sure that preserve transparency is off, otherwise it won't do anything. And I'm going to pick a color. I don't even know what color it's going to fill this with. But we're going to say OK. And it looks like it's purple. 
and that looks pretty good. I don't see a lot of fringing or anything around here. We could we could zoom in a little. This is kind of a low resolution image, but if you know, if it bothers you to see this little bit of mess down here at the bottom, I guess that's part of the drone, of the running things at the bottom. I think we're okay. So if I go back to view and go back to 100% or Command One, you can see that's pretty good. And I can turn this off. And that's going gonna, gonna to overlay just fine on whatever background you want to put it on. So that's the easy way to do it with the Magic Wand tool. Now, that's because we had a really simple background to get it off of, and there was enough contrast between the object and the background to be able to do that with Magic Wand. I'm going to do a second video, and I'll put the link to it in the description. It shows how to do it with more complicated images with more complicated backgrounds.